of the most common questions I get is how to take a regular fretted banjo arrangement and turn it into something for the fretless, specifically taking advantage of all the things that the fretless banjo does really, really well. This is a huge topic and it is beyond the scope of just this short video to go through all of the ways that we can fretlessize an arrangement. But there are some easy things you can do right away to any arrangement of any tune that you're working on to make it fretless friendly. And that's what we're doing today. Welcome to Banjo Quest. Now I am tuned to a modal for this lesson today. We have been working on Cluck Old Hen over on the Banjo Quest Patreon. Link is in the description below if you want information about that. If you wanna join us over there, we're doing a ton of fun stuff this winter, including an upcoming boot camp in January. We're gonna do some live stream hangouts and there is a sale on my merch store just about to go live over there. If you want in on that, please click the link below and join us over on Banjo Quest. It is a blast. The first thing that I do when I'm taking a tune and bringing it to the fretless banjo is I simplify my arrangement. So if I've got big fancy chords, if I have any chords at all, I'm going to thin those out into single note licks. Now that doesn't mean that a fretless banjo can't be used for chords because it definitely can. But when I'm starting out, when I'm just thinking about the entry point of my arrangement, I'm going for single lines. I'm thinking in a linear way. And it's often inspired by listening to the great Round Peak Masters because they were so good at hearing these traditional tunes and then bringing them into their fretless world. So players like Tommy Gerald, Kyle Creed, and Fred Cockerham are sort of my guiding lights into how to look into a tune and see this fretless line through it. So simplify the arrangement, get rid of chords, pick a note out of the chord that you're playing and just get one note at a time. Another thing to think about if you're trying to bring tunes onto the fretless is the repertoire itself can help you or hurt you in the beginning. Now I am of the firm belief that any tune you play can be adapted to fretless banjo, but some tunes are simply easier than others to do this with. And that's why Cluck Old Hen is a really good one. It happens to be in a modal tuning, so we're not really thinking about chords until we maybe pull this into an advanced space. But in the beginning, we just need a through line, just one linear line to get us all the way through. The melody is super easy. It's very contained, and it's near a major reference point on the fretboard, and that is our fifth fret here. So that really helps a beginner with their intonation is if they're floating down here where there aren't a lot of reference points, it can be a little tricky. You get what I call the fretless drift, which tends to be flat. But if we get up here and we're nestled against this fifth fret peg, it's all right there between your ring and index fingers, which makes Cluck Old Hen really the ideal tune to understand how fretless phrasing works. So we've picked the right tune to adapt to fretless. We've made sure that we've got a firm anchoring in our fifth fret zone, and that prevents us from drifting. Now let's think about the arrangement itself. We're going purely linear. We're gonna avoid chords for now. So the first thing I do when I'm adapting a tune to fretless is I think of the scoop. And no, I'm not referring to this beautiful scoop here. What I'm referring to is a vocal technique where you start flat under the pitch that you want and you scoop up into the correct pitch. I'm gonna show you this on our signpost phrase of Cluck Old Hem. The signpost phrase, if you remember, is... Now that signpost phrase is one of the key moments that I have to hit while I'm playing Cluck Old Hen to make Cluck Old Hen sound like the right tune. But this is the interesting thing about fretless. Because we don't have frets, instead of thinking of the notes as being static pitches, we can be more like a watercolor artist and let the watercolor blur the notes. So instead of a static note on the third fret, third string, I'm gonna scoop up into that note, starting just a touch flat. Now 
Now this is a subtle move. A lot of you veteran banjo players are gonna think that's just a slide. And it is, but the reason why I'm calling it something a little different is because when a new fretless player gets their fretless banjo, the first thing they do is slip slide all over the neck in these big wide ranging slides. And to me, that is something that doesn't sound great. It's fun to do when you first get your banjo. I highly encourage you slip slide all over the place. But then when you get your wits about you and you say, all right, now I gotta find out how to make palatable music with this crazy thing. I think the smaller moves are much better sounding. So that's why I'm calling this a scoop rather than a slide. It's a grace note that we're using to smear the pitch of a note, not necessarily a big wide ranging slide where we're going from pitch to pitch. So again, if I slow this down, I'm starting just flat of that third fret. And I'm just sort of pushing just a little bit with my fingertip. And to really drive home this point, I've created a symbol in my tab that will show you when we want to blur the note, when we want to scoop into a pitch. And that's going to look just like this, a sort of a little line, a little hash mark. I don't want you to think slide here. I want you to think scoop or blur. All right, let's speed this up. Don't play it too slidey. We want to avoid that sound. We want a real subtle push. Let's speed it up, here we go. One, two, three, four. I'm barely moving. Let me position my hand a little bit better so you can see that. Here we go. Watch how little movement I'm making with this index finger. We're talking a quarter of an inch, a couple millimeters here that I'm moving that. How subtle can you make it? I mean, that would be a fun challenge because you will hear it. You will hear it. There is a distinct difference between that and a static note played on a fretted instrument. All right, let's speed it up a little faster and you're really gonna feel this slight little seasick moment when we get that pitch. Yeah, one, two, and a one, two, three, four. Now you can make a choice whether to hit the fifth string following the scoop or not. Some may want the quarter note there. What round peak players often do is they will hit the fifth string on the upstroke even while their left hands, their fretting hands, are in motion. That just helps punctuate your sentence and sort of give an ending point to that sort of blurring of the pitch. It also keeps that fifth string ringing in the pattern. So if we play this up to speed, when you drop out that fifth string after hitting it a lot, if you're double thumbing a lot and then suddenly that fifth string goes away, it feels very gappy and not smooth. So I think that's why a lot of round peak players tend to leave those upstrokes in on the fifth string even when the left hand is active, which is generally pretty unusual in banjo styles. All right, now let's answer the question. So, scoop the note. Tom, got it, I'm blurring my pitches. Cool, let me just do that. But the question is, when do I do that and when do I not do that? Am I blurring or scooping every note? The answer is no, because if you do that, you're gonna have a mushy mess on your hands. So the way I think about this, and this requires some trial and error, it's a little bit different for every tune, but I think about my key moments in the tune, my signposts, I find my signposts, and I tend to try to find landing notes. 
And that's a nice landing note to focus on getting that scoop happening. But let's look at the B part to see how far we can push this and, and see how we can deploy this idea in another part of the tune. Let's look at the beginning part of Cluck Old Hen and see if we can scoop any of those notes. Here's our beginning. That third fret note, I don't like that. I don't like that, so I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna be static. Maybe on that last descending leg, it would sound good. So I'd scoop that one. Yeah, I like that a lot. So now I've got a plan. I know I'm gonna scoop some of my notes and I'm gonna leave others static. Leaving all those static. And scooping that one, the lead into that descending signpost run. If you can make these two big concepts work for you, there isn't much you have to do after that to fretlessize a tune. It will sound really, really different from how you play it on a fretted banjo. All right, and that does it today. Please join us over on Patreon. We're having a blast, and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.